new church directory. I know I ran into a little problem when I was doing it, so if you have any issues with uh, logging into it or whatever, uh, just give the office a call. They can walk you through it. Um, does anybody have any other announcements that, that uh, be good? Glenda? Um, Okay, did everybody hear about that? The veggie table, they're bringing it back. If you have excess from your garden or, or and you want to share, bring it and leave it on the table. But make sure you take it with you when you go because there's nobody in here throughout the week to discard the leftovers. So make sure you take it back with you after church. And it's free, y'all. So if it's out there, take what you want. Are there any other announcements? And I would like to take a few minutes just to welcome any visitors that we may have, either here or online. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we just pray God's blessings over you. Now, if you will, stand with me and let's share the pledge for this great and wonderful nation that will be great again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now please remain standing as we join together with our invocation and call to worship. Almighty God, as we stand in awe of your goodness and mercy today, we invite you to be present with us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have made the way of love known through Jesus Christ. Reveal your great love to us today and let our hearts overflow as we proclaim your everlasting goodness. Amen. Now, if you will, turn, go across the aisle. We can touch now. And say hi and good morning and welcome and we love you. Share the love. Share the love. God is good all the time. and all the time.
Let's hear for all our VBS people and the volunteers. And if you can, please stand. Our opening hymn this morning, Lead Me, Lord. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Y'all look like a bunch of happy faces. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, I will say I'm so thankful for Randy Taylor who brought the message last week, but he's just too good. Golly, he's amazing. I, I don't know about y'all, but I, he could read a recipe book to me and I'd love it. Just his cadence and the way he talks. And, you know. Some of these preachers that have been preaching, not all of them, but a few of them, you know what I'm talking about. They have a certain, I don't know, I just go, I guess when I'm real old, I'll have that. But I don't have it yet. I don't know what it is. Well, anyway, we are glad to have you today that you chose to come to Red Bank UMC. And we are going to pick up in a series we've been going to do throughout the summer in Genesis. And uh, we're not going to cover every little piece, but we're going to cover a, a fair bit of it. And if you want to help, uh, just turn to chapter six we're going to look at chapter six we skipped chapter five i figured you didn't want to hear about the whose brothers of whose kids of whose you know stuff so we don't bore you with that we're going i tell people well, when you start reading the bible don't start in genesis or leviticus or some crazy i said start in mark but we it is important to know books and to know the highlights and this story today we're going to talk about you may have heard of before noah now, when my little first child was born, little boy, we themed his room with Noah. You know, the animals and the, the ark and all that. And I said, isn't that sweet? What a sweet little story. A boat and animals and people. Sounds like a cruise. Sorry to tell you that that's not very biblical. The real story is what we're going to read the next couple of Sundays. And the first uh, part starts right here. And it actually starts out a little different maybe than the, because the whole chapter is not Noah, but the very first of it is not Noah at all. But it's going to describe the world as it was. And it says, when human beings, this is chapter 6, verse 1, 
when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them as they may choose. What? The sons of God saw that daughters of humans... I don't know. It says, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. That is unique. That's different. I mean, it's, it sounds like something like the, like, and, and I've, I've read, spe- the, the answer to this part of the scripture is we don't know. But it sounds like some, something extra, you know extraordinary happen we we don't quite where is this angels and people and it says the nephilim this is verse four nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward and when the sons of god went to the daughters of humans and they had children by them they were heroes of old men of renown this sounds like some kind of mythology some kind of god had angels or heavenly creatures it just seems weird does it seem weird to you okay good because it seems even weird to me it's like what, what are they talk? I don't really I will say this though you can substitute the word in the film for giant these were giants have you ever seen a giant anybody seen a giant I saw a giant one time in person that I, I it was 1992 my buddy who, who worked in Charlotte for a TV station said to me, come, he said, to, to, we're, we're gonna have, they're going to have a game tonight and we're playing the Orlando Magic. And, and when I got there, I had, and I'm, I will say, I, not any of my doing, I had courtside seats. And when this individual was in the layup line before the game started, if he was at the back of the layup line, you could still see him no matter who was in front of him and when he was in the front of the layup line you couldn't see anybody behind him seven foot one three hundred pound man huge man and the irony is he played another nearly seven footer named Alonzo Mourning and he dwarfed him his name was Shaq Shaquille O'Neal and you just go that and I I tell y'all my first thought was now fill him there's one. No, I go, how in the world a human being becomes that big? And he, he was athletic. That was even more amazing. He wasn't just big. He was athletic and could run up and down. He literally turned and shot down at the basket. Back in the, that he was young back then. He could get off the ground. But it was just amazing. So evidently, but this does, this sounds like some kind of mythology, some kind of explanation of, of something. But I don't understand it. And here's the problem. We're not meant to always understand everything in the Bible as it's written. But that's just, we take it on faith that that's what happened. And it says, the Lord, verse 5, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart were only evil all the time. Have you been paying attention to the last few years? <sighs> Anybody think the, the world is getting more moral and, and God-centered? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller, Bueller, anyone, anyone, no, sir. Nobody. It's gotten worse and worse. You know, 20 years ago, you thought, hey, the world's, what they say, going to hell in a handbasket. It's gotten worse than that. And, and what, what I'm reading here is that you think today's bad, this was worse. And I hate to break the news, we may see worse in the future. I'm tell, here's, here's a truth that I can leave you. I may not know what Nephilim always was about, but I can tell you this. The church is to be different than the culture in terms of we are to be God-centered. We are to be living lives. We are swimming and, you know, the old fish. I don't know if you ever, when back during Nero's persecution, the early church, Christians were persecuted and somebody walked up and they swiped their foot and created a half, a half of a circle and the other person walked up and used their foot to create a fish symbol to acknowledge that they were Christians. It was a secret way to acknowledge that you were a believer. I mean, those were bad times, obviously. But, I mean, things, things can get worse. Things can get worse. 
We just pray they don't. We pray they don't. But the wickedness of human beings has become terrible. Verse 6, the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. Now you might say this is anthropomorphic in terms of uh, giving God human emotion, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe as we've read that God creates us in his image, that Jesus, who was the prototype, the original, we talked about that when we talked about creation a couple of weeks ago, the original, Jesus, you know, Jesus didn't show up in the middle of the story. Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit was always there, and we're created in the image of God. And at some point we go, Jesus wept when he found out that Lazarus, not only found out he was dead, but he wasn't as concerned over the death as he was the people that were mourning. And he wept because of all the people who were hurting so bad. We see that God has emotion. And here it says God regretted. God was troubled, deeply troubled, by the fact that human beings have, have gone their own way. Anybody have kids? If you got kids... Have you ever seen that they're going to do something they shouldn't be doing or they're, going, they're headed down a path they don't need to go? And even if you told them they won't believe you until they fall and, and either hurt themselves or whatever. And I, I, said, I had to say in the middle, last service because my daughter said, I said, all, I said, you know, my older three, not the baby, of course, has done that. <laughs> they all head down that road and you go, this is not going to turn out well. And lo and behold, you might have been right. You might have been wrong on occasion, but sometimes you just see that things aren't going well. God is upset and going, look how these people have turned out. I'm very upset with them. I regret maybe having made them. So the Lord said, verse 7, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created. And with them, the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. In other words, should we just go ahead and, you know, like an artist, you just you, you start painting and you don't like it? Do you either throw the canvas away or just whitewash the canvas? And God's going, maybe that's possible. For just a moment, God. Now, God is omni and knows, but, but in the moment, you see frustration. And I've told you, God is a God who loves a good story and walks the story with us. You know, anybody who likes a TV show or movie, you never want to just tune in the last five minutes and find out who did it. You want to watch it from the first to see the story. And that's the way God seems to work. And so God is frustrated, and it says this. I love this. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah. There was one. There was one. See, this theme, the one theme, is throughout the Bible. Later, Abraham will say about Sodom, Lord, if there's just... A few good people, or just if, if there's just one good person. How about um, Moses? Moses, if 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 one person is is good, he he barters with God. Later we see, you know, throwing out the fleece. If if this happens, Lord, there's a sense of one. Jesus was always like, if if one can be found, leave those ninety nine that you have in the pen. They'll take care of themselves. Go, go find the one. You know what happens when, when one is found? What does the Bible say one is found? What happens in heaven when one, one is, comes to Christ? They, that, it's a joyous part. They throw a party. A party happens. They have a celebration. When the lost son comes back, the one, what does the father do? Kills the, the fatted calf and puts rings on his fingers and tells him he loves him. And he lo- one. Jesus says, follow me. And they have a choice. Jesus says, come follow me. One. And that, that's what we see here. That, that one person in his family have followed God. And so, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Wasn't righteous on his own, but he was righteous because he walked with God faithfully. He took time. He was prioritized. This is, he was, he was, he'd found favor because he knew God. He, he communed with God regularly. He walked with God daily. He was literally a godly man. 
Doesn't mean he was perfect all the time. It means he was godly and righteous in the eyes of the Lord. See, that's, that's, that's what Jesus came to teach you. That's not you. It's the Lord is merciful, and the Lord will overlook your sins and iniquities because of his great mercy and, and love because you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. See, that's, that's the whole, you know, we, we, we ourselves are not righteous. We are, anybody remember my illustration of righteousness? Miss Lois, do you remember my illustration of righteousness? She brought me a Reese cup, put it on my desk. Because, see, we're the peanut butter, and God is the chocolate. Without God, we're not complete. With, with God covering us, we are made righteous. And that's, that's what he's saying here. And, it's, and basically, he said, you know, that he was going to destroy this plant, this whole everything he knew, but he found Noah, the righteous and blameless one. And it says, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people of the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for this earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress, wood, and make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. It's to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it. Uh, leaving below a roof and opening one cubit high around it. Put a door on the side of the ark and make a lower, middle, and upper decks. Verse 17 says, I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath, the breath of life on it, everything on the earth will perish. But... I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons, your wife, your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. Notice that. He didn't have to go on safari. They came to him. You know, St. Francis of Assisi said that we're the only creatures that don't know God in an intimate way. The birds sing. Who do you think they're singing to? God. The whales sing. Who do you think they're singing to? God. We are the only creatures that don't know God the way the animal king. That's the gift of the animal king. They don't have our intellect, but they have a knowledge of the presence of God. Now, that's not from Clay. That's from St. Francis said that. and Some of his writings, is, it's wonderful stuff. So, he said, uh, you are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and stored away as food for you and for them. And I love this, verse 22. Noah did everything just as God commanded. So he's righteous because he walks with God and believes in God. But when the chips are down and he tells you to start building the ark, Noah did what God told him. Anybody see Evan Almighty? Old movie from back in the early 2000s. Uh, Steve Carell was in it. Morgan Freeman played the God character. But, but you know, the, the funny part of he, he ends up, you know, not wanting to do it, but God tells him to do it, and finally he does it, and people are laughing at him because, you know, it hadn't started raining yet. You look pretty stupid building a big boat in the middle of the dry land, right? But... Noah did everything just as God commanded. The, the best part of this, too, is, is that today, if, if you don't get this, it's a lesson in obedience. The Lord said to, then said to Noah, over chapter 7, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found your, you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and female, one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and female, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Verse 8, sort of like the last verse of chapter 6. What does it say? And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. <laughs> Obedience. I know we don't talk a lot about that in churches anymore. Obe Obedience doesn't mean perfection. See, we've got... Push, push perfection. No, no, no. Obedience means 
that you have a heart, that your heart, your mind is bent towards the Lord. You lean towards what, you are leaning into what God wants. You're always asking yourself, God, what would you have me to do today? What would you have me to do tomorrow? What would you have me to do next month, next year, 10 years? God, how can I be your faithful servant today? That's the question we always have to ask as Christians. We are disciples. We're not just people who say, yeah, I believe. Sometimes we are. Sometimes we are, aren't we? We all fall short, but you know what? The difference is believers put your faith into action. See, we just finished that James series a couple of weeks ago. Faith works. Faith does it. Faith says, I will do what you've told me to do, even if I look stupid doing it. Because, again, I may be that fish swimming in, the di- in a different direction than the, all the rest of the fish. I may, you know, that's what we've always said. We're, we're, we're counterculture, folks. But too often we go culture nowadays. But we're supposed to be counterculture, at least for when it comes to following the Lord. And so, verse 6, Noah was 600 years old when the flood came on the earth. Now, I know what you're saying. That sounds crazy. And I got to laugh and say, I don't understand that. I don't know what they were looking at. Or I don't know if he's actually 600 of our years. I don't know. And it's, you know what? It's okay. We don't really, that's okay. The lessons are more important sometimes than the details. The lessons. And so Noah and his sons and his wife and his son's wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals of the birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the floodwaters came on the earth. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heavens were opened and rains fell on the earth for 40 days and for 40 nights. You ever been in a flood? Back around 2000, I think it was 15, we had uh, Hurricane Ike hit where, on the Houston Gulf Coast of the United States. And I lived on the north side of the hurricane where two rivers, the Natchez and the Sabine River, come down and form uh, 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 basically an inland harbor. But the land in between there is a little area called Bridge City, Texas. And I thought about putting a, putting a picture up, but I don't think you could have seen it well enough. But the entire 99% of the city, li- inside the city limits flooded, literally flooded from inches to feet. Some people got six feet. If you live closer to the water, some people got two or three feet. But this was not clean water like an intake line broke at your house, uh, if you ever had that kind of water spillage. This was like the sewer line had broken because it was gunk and junk from the from the harbor and from the from the area and from the sewer lines and from everything that came up in houses there were alligator snakes fish you name it and I went to my home thankfully and I did not flood I was out in the county on a little bit higher land believe it or not and uh, and and while we went that boy we dodged a bullet you know what we did next we put on galoshes and gloves and masks that wasn't the first time I'd worn a mask huh with the COVID, it was first time was that flood because you didn't want to breathe in that stuff. And you went and you helped people muck out their houses and pull the carpet out and clean and knock out, cut sheetrock about three feet up and, you know, clean it out as best they could to get ready for, for insurance to come give them an estimate and help them start rebuild. But yeah, floods, are, floods push, floods can move things, floods are terrible. Floods can, can change, I mean, that's just, it's just, it just changes everything in its path. But a flood is a terrible thing. And so this is happening. The flood is happening. And it says this. It it basically says, um, on that, uh, let's see, uh, on that day, this is verse 13, on that day, Noah and his son Shem, Ham, Japheth, together with his wife and his wives, those three sons entered the ark. They had with them every kind of wild, every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, all creatures that move on the ground according to its kind, every bird according to its kind, everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals, 
going in were male and female of their, every living thing as God had commanded Noah. And then God, the Lord God, shut them in, shut him in. Which, in other words, God closed the door of the ark. Why do you think God had to do that? Was, it, was Noah incapable? How do you think Noah felt? Noah was a righteous, godly, loving man. What do you think when his neighbors came to him and said, Oh, Noah, Noah, let us in. He wanted to open the doors and let them in. He wanted to leave the door open and let them in. Oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Aren't we sweet? I mean, don't you love people? I love people. But had Noah taken on more, would, the, would they have survived? Probably not. And I will say God is so gracious and so merciful, he closed the door for them instead of turning people away. I know that there are people that had every opportunity to follow God in Noah's day, but chose not to. So, that's the question. Does God send sweet people to hell does God do this and the answer is well does a just and merciful judge I, I, I get it you know the thief on the cross said last minute hey let me get in but you know the thief on the cross didn't know God he didn't know Jesus he learned of Jesus when he went to the cross I get I, I guess some people think that's the model that's not the model I hate to break the news once you know you can't not know. But, but I get it. But here's the question for you. Is God just? Is God a just judge? If, a, if, if, you, went, if you knew someone that killed your loved one and they did it clearly out of, they knew what they were doing, they had every choice in the world not to, but they went and killed your loved one, what would you say the judge should do? Just slap them on the hand and say, go ahead and go home, you're free. Should they do that? Should the judge do that? Of course not. That wouldn't be a just judge. Our judge says to us, I love you. Act right, behave yourself, follow me. I'm going to give you grace for the times you don't follow. I love you when you're, I love you unconditionally. But part of this is the one condition is accepting. Accept, do you accept as, me as your Lord? If you will accept me as your Lord and Savior, I will love you through eternity, not just this life. Through eternity. You will be my... And, and Jesus, you think, well, Jesus was loving. He, 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 let, you know, he, he welcomed people. Yeah, he welcomed all kind of folks. Anybody. Come. But when he welcomed them, he said, come be a disciple. Come follow me. And he tells a story about the brides, the maidens who go out looking for oil. And they come back and they, he says, I never knew you. And they knock on the door. If you, if you see that's the when we pick and choose scripture you end up with stories that go if you pick and choose everything sweet in Jesus and he's you know loving the tie-dye t-shirt going hey babe you know peace love and everything's great but the real Jesus is I love you I love you I love you follow me follow me there's as I've said so many times there's grace and there's discipleship there's there's full of truth and grace the truth is follow follow Jesus and, and so when Lord, the Lord shut them in, I know Noah's heart was breaking. I know God's heart was breaking because not everybody could get on that ark. And we have a choice. We have a choice. So, verse 17, we're almost done. For 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And as waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark floated on the surface of the water. And it rose greatly on the earth. And they all were on high, all the high mountains were under the entire heavens were covered. In other words, it was a deep flood. The waters rose and covered the mountains to the depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, animals all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all humankind. I don't like that, but that's, that's what happened. 
Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. We will pick up from there. But, um, that, I know, you want to keep me to keep going? Start again? No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I mean, we do, we have choices. So, so that's, the, the, you know, obedience. Uh, trust and obey is getting ready to be our next hymn. It, do you believe what the scripture says? Do you believe the hymn you're going to sing? Trust and obey. Just that simple. Obedience doesn't mean perfection. Obedience means bending, leaning into God and God's will every day of our life. My challenge for you is to do exactly that. Amen.
instead of stand and state our faith using the Apostles' Creed found in our bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. is trust and obey we'll be doing verses one and four one and four only time we come to our joys and concerns our prayer requests do we have any prayers Eddie and uh, we'll be glad to bring you a microphone have any prayer requests there we go Miss Lois yes uh, I would like for y'all to keep in your hearts and prayers uh, two of my sister-in-laws my husband's twin sister Betty she's got uh, low oxygen and uh, she did get to come home yesterday with oxygen, and they're not really sure of everything that was wrong with her. And then I have um, my husband's, um, uh, my sister-in-law, my husband's uh, oldest brother, his wife. She has pneumonia, and they say it's double layers of pneumonia, and she's getting mm. oxygen treatments. And um, just remember them. Hopefully, and this jumper sister-in-law. Any others? Have any prayer requests? Oh, there you go, Miss Deb. I just, I just want to brag a little bit. 
I went um, to have a call back on my mammogram and they did two more mammograms and they found something, did an ultrasound, they didn't like what they saw, so they were gonna do a needle biopsy. So I went back for the needle biopsy about two days later and they can't find anything. How about that? I did well, a mammogram Friday just to make sure, but it's gonna come back we're fine. Gonna pray, yes, we're gonna pray that they did, could not find anything, amen. amen. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful for me. Any others back here? Any others? Um, my yes. friend's boss has been diagnosed with two types of cancers, so please keep him and his family in your prayers. Okay. I, like Debbie, had to go back again. Um, I had a mammogram and something showed up back in March, and I had to go in April, and they did an ultrasound, and then I had to go back this past week, and it was gone too. How about that? Okay. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, I'm enjoying standing up with the choir today. Yes. My back got me to sit back down. <laughs> I love it. And, and I'm praising the Lord for it. But I'd like to lift up my Mimi Grace. She has been a caregiver for a child or a young man who is. Any others? All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Merciful God, we give you thanks for your blessings, for your amazing mercy, Lord, for, for your insight that helps to give us. Uh, we know that, Lord, there are times when we ask what we should do, and, and so often maybe we do it and maybe we don't. Lord, help us to be more obedient. Help us to, to hear your word and hear the way we should live our lives, That the fact that we as Christians want to be disciples, and yet sometimes we ignore our own discipleship. Lord, give us strength, give us courage, uh, help us to help us to have faith when we don't have faith. Help our unbelief at times. Lord, we live in a hurting world where we pray for others to lift them up and to, to care for them, for the folks who have experienced death as, as Grace in her situation, but folks who have had medical issues, Lord, we pray for them, we pray for those who have gone through surgeries and, and are recovering. Um, we pray for those who are spiritually just feeling uh, like this is a difficult time in this world. We pray for those who are facing financial or economic or family crisis. Lord, those are so many different things going on. And Lord, we know that your church should be a place of healing, a place of hope, a place of restoration. Lord, help us to be that here at this church and help us to reach all that we can reach. Not only our church, but the church uh, in our nation, church worldwide. Lord, we know you have great plans for your kingdom, and we are excited that we know that that kingdom is not of this life, but of the next. Help us to find faith and help us to continue to have faith. We pray that it's in Jesus, as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us, again, be obedient in our giving as we give to God with grateful hearts our tithes and offerings. You can either follow along or sing along. This is my song.
God, again, we give you thanks as we return a portion of what you have commanded. Lord, we ask that it be seen with favor, that it go to places to serve where we ourselves may not, and let those who gave be blessed for their givings. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, America. Watch over you. May you continue to ask daily, what be thy will, God? What does God want you to do each and every day, the week ahead, the months ahead? Seek God's will and lean into God's desires for your life. There you will find fulfillment, and there you will find life. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.